results coming in from hotly contested primaries across the country. And in Kansas, a major victory for abortion rights advocates. With the midterms less than 100 days away, Republicans in Arizona hoping to define their party's future. Wood Johnson is on the ground in Paradise Valley. Byron, the ballots are still being counted, but the energy is high here at Cary Lake headquarters. Her campaign staffers tell me that Lake is taking in the gravity of the moment. Remember, she was a local news anchor here for more than 20 years. She's used to covering elections. Now she's at the center of one. Meanwhile, her top rival, her opponent in the Republican primary, Karen Taylor Robeson, she's the GOP establishment pick. She believes that she has all the momentum right now, and she's showing well in some of the early results that are coming in, and she thinks that she is peaking at just the right time. This is a primary election that has gained national interest, and it's a battle over the identity of the Republican Party, putting former President Donald Trump up against his former Vice President, Mike Pence. With polls closed in Arizona and ballots being counted, supporters of Carrie Lake hope she will be the Republican nominee for Arizona governor. Carrie Lake, a former TV news anchor, catapulted into the national spotlight after being endorsed by former President Trump. No one understands better than Carrie how to fight back against the fake news media and the radical left. Tonight's primaries testing former President Trump's power over the Republican Party and perhaps a signal of where the GOP is headed. The Trump endorsement meant a lot in Arizona uh, and the idea of, of running on the MAGA and Trump banner, that is how Carrie Lake tried to define herself, uh, her loyalty to the false claims around the last election. She did not have the Republican establishment backing. Lake has been a fervent supporter of Trump, continuing to push the false claim that the 2020 election was stolen. We will no longer accept corruptness and I know for a fact we will no longer accept rigged elections. Who's with me on that? Arizona was not stolen. Biden won this state by more than 10,000 votes. Lake's opponent, real estate developer Karen Taylor Robeson, has the endorsement of Trump's vice president, Mike Pence. But even she hedged when I asked her this. Do you think the election was legitimate? I believe the wrong guy is in the White House. I also believe that my opponent and the media is obsessed with 2020. I'm obsessed with 2022 and 2024. Trump's endorsement paired with Lake's fiery rhetoric. When mama goes MAGA, it is game over. Appealed to many voters. All of my morals, they're in, they align with Carrie. Um, I think she's very brave. I think she's also very loud and she's also a fighter. I don't feel like the opponent is um, at all, and that's why I'm here. Governor Doug Ducey welcoming tech... For decades, Lake worked at the Fox affiliate station in Phoenix before quitting journalism, a move some of her supporters find admirable. You know, doing the news every night for a decade more, you know what the problems are in your valley, in your area, and you can deal with that now. Mm -hmm. And she's a humble candidate. But other voters like Matt Kenny were hoping to move on from the chaos that has engulfed the state since 2020. I can't just keep being dragged like through this over and over again to keep saying, hey, there was voter fraud. And then we say, OK, show it to us. And then they show us nothing. So, so you're looking forward. You don't want to look forward. back. That's absolutely right. Those voters choosing Robeson, who is backed by former Vice President Mike Pence. There is only one candidate in this race who will be ready on day one to lead Arizona even to greater heights, and that's Karen Taylor Robeson. We want level heads. We don't want no more craziness. We've had enough of that, right? That's behind us. We're only concerned about what's in front of us. Many have tried to make this race about a battle versus the GOP establishment and the Trump MAGA loyalists. Do you see the race that way? I see this race about the future of Arizona and what direction we're going. Arizona has a lot of challenges, like many states across this country. And Arizonans are looking for tough, principled, experienced leadership. They're tired of the drama. It's too early to know which side will prevail. As polarizing as Trump is in many circles, and as many people, in the, even the Republican Party, are, are trying to rally to oppose him and his choices, he remains an extraordinarily valuable commodity in Republican politics. Another test of Trump's hold over the party in Arizona, the race for state Senate between Trump-backed candidate David Farnsworth and the current state Speaker of the House, Rusty Bowers. Trump attacked Bowers on the campaign trail after he testified during the January 6th hearings. Rusty Bowers, 
is a rhino coward who participated against the Republican Party in the totally partisan unselect committee of political thugs and hacks. Bauer is telling the committee that despite immense pressure from Trump and his associates, he refused to overturn Arizona's election results. I said, look, you are asking me to do something that is counter to my oath when I swore to the Constitution to uphold it. To quote uh, the former president, during the conversation, he told me the election was rigged and that I won Arizona, unquote. Did you have such a conversation with the president? I did have a conversation with the president. Um, that certainly isn't it. Anywhere, anyone, anytime has said that I said the election was rigged, that would not be true. He spoke to my colleague John Carl last week. So let's go back to what Trump actually wanted you to do after the election of 2020 and Rudy Giuliani. I mean, they, they, they basically wanted you to overturn the results in Arizona. I that mean, would be the result of what they asked, yes. Yeah. Well, did you ever consider going along with it? Did you ever? The idea of throwing out the election of the president is like, okay, so what part of Jupiter do I get to land on and colonize? Bowers, a longtime Republican state lawmaker, voted for Trump twice, but not again. I'll never vote for him, but I won't have to because I think America's tired and there's some absolutely forceful, qualified, morally defensible and upright people. And that's what I want. That's what I want in my party and that's what I want to see. Primaries were held in five states tonight, but in Kansas, voters weighed in on another hot button issue. We want to only make abortion illegal but unthinkable. I believe strongly that women need to have this choice for themselves. For the first time since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, abortion on the ballot. Kansans voting to keep constitutional abortion protections that allow most abortions up to 22 weeks, a rare instance where citizens, not just legislators, have a say in their state's abortion laws. My colleague, Rachel Scott. Tonight, a major victory for abortion rights advocates here in Kansas. It is a strong signal that this state, these voters do value abortion rights. The battle's still not over yet. There are 14 states where abortion has all but stopped. Others are considering bans as well. But for this group, those gathered here today, they were shattered by the news of Roe versus Wade being overturned weeks ago. Today, they are celebrating this victory and hope that it sends a message ahead of the critical midterm elections less than 100 days away. Kansas has long prouded itself as for being a free state and prizing freedom. Couples like Brianna and Kyle O'Brien are relieved abortion protections will remain in their state. The devout Catholics terminated their pregnancy in June after learning their child was diagnosed with two rare and severe genetic conditions that would cause significant disability and a shortened lifespan. Every family has, has, should have that right to decide what's best for their babies. It's not just about Kansas women. This is going to be an example that's set throughout the whole U.S. The fiercely competitive races across the ballot giving us a glimpse of what's to come in November and ultimately which party could control Congress and beyond. If we've learned anything from this primary season is that the uncertainties around electoral politics continue. Uh, there are continue to be upsets. There continue to be surprises. There continue to be an issue set that changes almost by the day, almost by the week. And it's all going to culminate in 2022 and ultimately 2024. There's still a lot of dividing and a lot of anger for this country to work itself through. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.